You can chalk paint almost any surface, glass, metal, mirror, plastic, and even previously painted or varnished or wax surfaces. I am starting with a base coat of French linen. I recommend two coats. I'm creating lots of random brush strokes as I'd like lots of texture. Always have a water bottle on hand and always start with a moist paintbrush. I generally use a flat palm held chippy brush as for blending. Easy to hold and very lightweight. Just a personal favorite. After my first two coats are completely dry, we can now start blending. These are the products I am going to use and I will talk you through each of them as we go. I love using clear glaze. It's a decorative medium Think of clear glaze as added moisture. It's almost like a lubricant making blending much easier and smoother to the blending process. You don't have to concern yourself with the water at this point. I am using a separate brushes for my paint colors. You can use any brushes you have. And a separate brush for my clear glaze, which is always applied first. You can use any chalk paint color design you want or product you wish. I am using any Salone's chalk paint. I am starting with En Fleur, a brown color, followed by French Linen, which is like a light taupe color, and Chateau Grey, which is a light gray olive color. Now I want to introduce the Wooster Pro Wool. This is a blending tool, also known as a meshing applicator. This meshing applicator is fantastic. It literally does the blending work for you. I decided to go with olive instead of the Chateau Grey. I noticed with mixing the French linen, the Chateau Grey was getting too light, so I decided to go with olive because I wanted a, a deeper tone. Always remember, really important to apply your clear glaze first. And as you're working, you're gonna wanna offload your glaze and paint. You can apply your paint colors in any fashion and design that you want. I'm just showing you on this particular piece. So using the meshing applicator, I am literally just tap, 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 tap. That's all you're doing. And you don't need to do very hard, just very lightly. And I generally will do the darker tones, offload, then go to my lighter tones. It's a lot of fun.
So for this particular design that I'm doing, I'm making the outside of the drawer frames uh, a little on the darker side with the brown chalk paint. Again, use any design that you want. And I wanted to blend the center so they were nice and soft, but still carried a nice olive tone. For stronger tones, like the olive, adding the French linen can really give it a nice soft feeling. So if you're ever working with chalk paints that are a very, very strong color, adding the tone of a taupe will definitely make it more mild and more subtle. If for any reason you want to change something, no problem at all. Just let what you've blended uh, with the clear glaze dry completely. Go back and repeat the exact same process. Add the clear glaze first, then put your colors down and mesh right over top. And it's really easy to correct any time. So if you come back the next day and there's just something you've decided you didn't like, go ahead, correct it. If you'd like to see some other examples of using the blending color meshing technique, I have a couple of other uh, recent tutorials I've done, so you're welcome to go over to my channel playlist and take a peek at those for other inspiration and examples of color designs and uh, technique work with using the meshing applicator. important tip with using the glaze and the meshing applicator is you really don't need very much paint just a little bit at the tips of your paint brushes the one thing I absolutely adore about color meshing and using this applicator is I've completed this entire project in about an hour If you want more information on any of the products that I'm using, you're welcome to take a look at the description box below um, on this tutorial and there will be a full outline of everything that I've used for this tutorial. Also available for purchase on Amazon. So as a general rule, as I'm meshing, as you can see, it's important to offload as you are working with your mesher and your different color tones. So I'll generally go around to my darker tones, do my meshing, offload, then go to my other color tones or lighter tones. And again, if for any reason you don't like how the blending turned out or you don't like the sequence in which you wanted to try, no problem at all. Just let it dry, add your clear glaze again, add the colors that you want, and voila, just do it again. Now I want to show you our next step. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use some stencils, artist brushes, just any artist brush. You can use a roller too if you want. Um, I'm just going to show you because I want to have a few colors into the stencil. And then what I want to do is um, kind of mute it a little bit 
by adding just a hint of maybe even some Chateau Grey. So anyhow, I'm gonna explain all of this as we go. And um, I'm also gonna show you a really cool effect that you can do after you do the stencils. So once we've placed the colors in random, just kind of giving it some definition and giving it just like kind of a timeless classic look, like it's been there for years. And then um, I want to add even more depth and dimension to it and I'm going to show you a cool little trick that I do with the stencils. For the stenciling, I chose to use the En Fleur, the brown, a meal, which is a lilac color, and the Chateau Grey, which is a kind of a muted version of the olive. To create the effect that I wanted, which was an aged and worn, it's all about shading. So starting with the en fleur on the outside of the stencil, onto the outer perimeters, and then I worked it in with a meal and then a bit of the Chateau Grey for a more muted look. So all I'm doing is technically just stippling using the tips of the artist's brushes because they're small enough and this way I can go around and random how I wanted the shading. So I decided to go with a smaller stencil for the drawer fronts, so this would highlight and accent where the hardware is going to be. Stencils are a fantastic way to accent and decorate and create a really fun design to a really straightforward boring piece such as this that's just flat with no woodworks and no detail to it. So always remember, glaze is never a sealer. It's only a decorative medium. Because it's um, shiny as you're working with it, a lot of people have this misconception that it's sealing their chalk paint project. No. You still need to either use clear wax or you can use a matte um, lacquer or any lacquer, but a lacquer will also seal your chalk paint projects. So. I am going to show you now what I'm going to do in addition to give these stencils even more dramatic pop. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and clear wax this first and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. When using a clear wax, you want to try to find a lint-free or cheesecloth to apply the wax. And here, I am actually going to be using black wax. And all I want to do, placing the stencil exactly where I had it, is just go around to the very, very tips and corners of the stencil. And you'll see what happens when we lift it off. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you have any 
questions, you can leave comments in the comment box below. All the supplies I've used are going to be in the description box below. And you can find any of the products or tools that I've used um, for your own purchase and or for reference. See what you have at home. And again, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week with another fun project that I can't wait to share with you.